Hello, welcome to another module of this course, Analog Circuits. In the last uh, module, we had introduced you to the concept of an op-amp. What is an op-amp? What were its properties, especially that of an ideal op-amp? In this module, we shall be seeing some applications of the ideal op-amp. So, once again, if we draw the circuit of an ideal op-amp, It's a three port device, V O, V 1, V 2. So, this is the inverting, this is the non inverting port. Now, let us see one first uh, application, which is the summer. This is the basic circuit of a summer or more precisely what we call a summer inverter, also known as an inverting amplifier. Now, why it is called an inverting amplifier? It will become clear if we see the equations. Now, see that the non inverting terminal is grounded, but the inverting terminal is not grounded. Now, since this is an ideal op amp, there is a virtual short present between the inverting and non inverting terminals. Therefore, the voltage here is 0, the voltage here is also 0. If this is 0 voltage, then that means there is a what we call a virtual short. And virtual short means that whatever be the input voltage, this point will keep on acting like a short. It is not really connected to the ground, but it is for all practical purposes, it acts like a short, because this voltage will always be the same as this voltage, which is 0. So, now, if we write the current I that will be given by V 1 over R 1. And also, we know that the input impedance of an op amp is infinity. So, the current flowing inside the op amp is 0. Therefore, all the current coming flowing through R 1 will be diverted through this path and hence the current along this path is also I. So, we can say that now, what is the current flowing through this resistance R f? It is the same as this current, but what is the value in terms of R f? Can we write that I is equal to this voltage minus this voltage upon the resistance? So, then I equal to 0 minus V O upon R f. Now, equating the two, we get V O is equal to minus R f upon R 1 V 1. That is it. Now, it is called an inverting amplifier, because the output is the negative of the input. Negative of the input also means inverted, like 180 degree phase shift. So, if suppose our V 1 is a sinusoidal signal, then it will look something like this. We plot the input that is V 1 as a function of time like this.
then the output which is usually amplified will be the inverse of this. So, where it is positive it will become negative and where it is negative it will become positive and so on. So, because of this inversion or this 180 degree phase shift we call the amplifier as inverting amplifier. A special case arises when R f is equal to R 1, then V o will simply be the negative of V 1 and such a configuration is called unity gain inverter. So, all this inverter does is change the sign or introduce a phase shift. Now, if I ask you to find out the input impedance of this configuration. So, let us go back to our circuit. So, to find out input impedance what you do is you calculate the input voltage over the input current. So, z in is equal to v 1 over i and that is simply equal to r 1. We can also try to calculate the output impedance. The output impedance of any amplifier, suppose this is a general rule to calculate the output impedance, what we do is suppose you have a source or many sources feeding this amplifier and you are taking output between certain points, then the way to find out the output impedance is to short all independent sources number 1, number 2 connect a source at the output say V 1 or let us say V 2 calculate current supplied by V 2, then your output impedance is equal to V 2 by I 2, say that current I call it as I 2. Okay. So, in the case of an op amp, what is let us go back to the equivalent circuit that we discussed in the previous class. So, the equivalent circuit of an op amp is given like this. Okay. Now, here or so let us say it is V in. Now, here we have connected a resistance R 1 okay. this terminal this is the non inverting terminal which is grounded and between these two terminals we have our R f. So, this is the V o terminal. Okay. Now, when I say, so the first step is to short this. If I short this, then this gets cancelled and we have this terminal directly connected to ground. So, if this terminal is connected to ground, and uh, this terminal is connected to ground and here at the output we connect a source. Okay. 
let us say that is V 2 and suppose the current supplied by V 2 is I 2, then if we can ca compute what is the value of I 2, we shall be able to calculate the value of the output impedance. Now, first thing uh, note that because this source voltage is now 0. So, we can say that V in that is the voltage actually appearing at the input at the non inverting terminal is 0. If V in is 0, then this A V in is also equal to 0. So, in that case the equivalent circuit becomes something like this. Now, this R f and R 1 which are in series is shunt to this short, this terminal is shorted directly. So, then the effect of these resistance go away and therefore, V 2 upon I 2 becomes equal to 0 since this is a short. So, the output impedance is therefore, equal to 0 for an inverting amplifier. Now, the next uh, application of this is in the same way. Now, this particular configuration that we discussed, uh, this was with a single source present, uh, but you may have a number of inverting sources or sources present which have to be uh, amplified. So, the circuit for that is or what we call a summer. In the previous case, we just talked about an inverting amplifier, but what if we have a number of such signals, then we get a circuit what is called the summer, which was the original topic that we are discussing now. So, in the circuit for that is this is the circuit. Now, here what we have is this source voltage source is V 1 till V n connected in shunt and then the shunt at the point where they are all joined is fed to the inverting input of an open. Now, the first thing is that the V o is very simply can be written as minus R f upon V 1 by R 1 plus V 2 upon R 2 plus till V n upon R n. Now, how did we obtain this result? So, here we applied the principle of superposition. Superposition means since this is a linear system, the effect of all the sources will be the sum of the effects of individual sources acting at a time. So, 
assume at the beginning we have only V 1 connected and all the sources are not connected. Other sources are not connected, then what it means is that these R 2, R 3 till R n, they are simply floating and therefore, they do not contribute anything to the output. In that case, the output will be if only V 1 is connected, which simply be minus R f upon R 1 times V 1. Similar will be the result for the other sources. For example, when only V 2 is connected, the output will be minus R f upon R 2 V 2 and so on. And finally, so the overall impact on V o will be the sum of the impacts produced by these individual sources and that is how we get this sum. One thing that we have not so far uh, considered is, is the current that is being sourced at the output of the op amp. Uh, what I mean is, suppose we have an op amp in an inverting configuration. the relationship between V o and V 1 is like this. So, from this it appears as if the only the ratio of R f and R 1 that is what matters. Individual values of R f and R 1 do not matter, but is it so? Let us see with an example. Suppose, we have summer in this configuration. Now, as we can see V o will be given by minus 4 V 1 minus 2 V 2. Now, suppose the maximum current that can be sourced say the maximum current that can be provided at the output of this op amp is say 5 ampere 5 milli ampere. So, I o max is say equal to 5 ampere milli ampere. And say the maximum output voltage that can be provided at the output is equal to 10 volts. Okay. Now, this maximum vo output voltage this concept comes from uh, the saturation voltage of the device used. For example, in any this is after all a practical circuit. So, this might have been built with some BJTs or MOSFETs. By BJT, I mean a bipolar junction transistor and MOSFET, I mean a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Whichever device we use, they have a certain maximum output voltage and a minimum output voltage. Now, usually, the maximum output voltage that can be supplied by a device is the upper rail or the upper value of the power supply. For example, if your power supply is between minus 10 volts to plus 10 volts, then this plus 10 voltage will be the upper rail of the power supply and this is the maximum output voltage that can be provided. And similarly, this minus 10 volt is the lower rail of the output voltage and this is the minimum voltage that can be provided. So, in this case, this is the way it is. So, V o magnitude is lesser than 10 volts. So, we have the rail to rail output voltage will be between minus 10 volts to plus 10 volts. Now, if this is the case, then 
what it means is since V o is given by this relationship, it means that minus 4 V 1 minus 2 V 2 modulus will be lesser or equal to 10 volts. Now, in the worst case, we will have an I f or the current flowing from this through this resistance. That is, if the output voltage it is at its maximum, then I f the current that is flowing through R f, the maximum value that will be reached is 10 divided by 20 k, which is equal to 0 0.5 milli ampere. So, I f max the maximum value of this I f is 0 0.5 m a and I f will be magnitude of I f will be lesser than this value. So, if that is the case, then suppose we are assuming the maximum current is being fed to do this R f, which is 0 0.5 m a and the maximum current that can be supplied by this op amp is 5 milli ampere. Then what is the maximum current that can be supplied to the next stage that is I o. So, then I o max or I should say it is the minimum sorry, because I f will be lesser than 0.5 ohm. So, I o minimum will be equal to 5 minus 0.5, which is equal to 4.5 milli amp. So, this is the maximum uh, or the minimum current that will always be present. Of course, if no current is flowing through this R f, then in that case the current, the maximum, the current that can be supplied to the output will be the full value of I o which is 5 milli ampere. So, this is the minimum current that can always be ensured at the output. This example uh, shows that it the current sourcing ability of the op amp is also an important parameter. So, our R f values for example, say in this case if our requirement uh, was indeed. So, suppose our requirement at the output of the op amp is that such that we have to keep on supplying 4.5 milli amperes of current always. Then in that case, this R f value cannot be lower than 20 kilo ohms. If it is lower than 20 kilo ohms, then the current supplied through R f will increase and it will make the current that can be sourced to the next stage lesser than 4.5 mm. So, this is where the values of R f uh, comes into play and there will be other such restrictions on the performance on, of op amp due to which R f and R 1 will have to be adjusted properly. So, it is not just the ratio of R f to R 1 that matters, it is also the individual values that matters. Taking forward uh, this concept, if we have a general impedance z 1 and a general impedance z f connected like this. This will be this will not be like this, this will be connected to v 1. Okay. So, then for any in the previous case, we had derived the relationship between V o and V 1 for resistances only, but in place of resistances, if we have general impedances z 1 and z f, then V o will be given by z f upon z 1 V 1. So, using this formula, we can derive some special circuits like integrators, which we shall be discussing in the next module. Thank you.